morning guys Saturday morning and I'm finally getting rid of this piece of crap York off my house it's finally not raining and this thing's got to go doesn't work in the heat pump mode leaks refrigerant on the evaporator it's time for her to go I've been ready to get rid of this thing so I'm gonna get started and uh, I'll keep you guys along with me today. All right, guys, there's my condenser, and it is a monster. So when you're a redneck and you live out in the woods like I do, this is how you haul a damn heavy-ass condenser around. A five-ton, 15-seer that's about probably 50-something inches tall. Take your tractor here, put it in the front end loader, and you just tote her on over to where she's gonna go sit in place, which is right over there. All right, guys, here's my air handler. It's in place, uh, you can't see the plenum. It's, it's up there though. It's all tied in, brazing's done. Got us a filter dryer there. Copper came out real good, looks real neat. So all I got left to do is, here's my high voltage. I gotta go through that knockout right there and wire it up. Wire up my low voltage. We're getting a vacuum started on it right now. So while it's in a vacuum, we you know, will, the condenser is done. All we got left to do on the condenser is low voltage. So we'll do that and then we'll do everything else in here while we're in a vacuum. All right guys, here she is. She's pretty. She's big. A TX5500 high efficiency. We're already down to 150 something microns. I covered my line set up. I didn't change the disconnect because uh, these, these disconnects are better than the, uh, the new ones. This, this is a really heavy duty disconnect, but I did replace my whip. And, uh, Made a bend right there with the heel more. But, and I got, uh, I got my legs underneath it. New pad. She looks good. All I got left to do out here is low voltage. I'm going to go ahead and do that and finish the voltage inside. I'm looking forward to starting this thing up. Guys, I just wanted to show y'all something real quick. What I found very impressive about ICP with their uh, deluxe models. Now, they weren't like this until recently, but deluxe models come two ways now, even in single stage, except 13 sear. But anything above 13 sear in a deluxe, the board is made for communicating, which is right here, or regular hardwire, which is right here, which is what I have done. And I just, you know, I didn't go communicating on this because it's single stage and plus I'm using the Ecobee thermostat. But I just think that, you know, for guys that do like communicating and if you're going to sell a single stage system, you can, you have to buy ICP's uh, Observer thermostat and you can go communicating right there on a 15 sear single stage or you can hardwire it like I've done here. So uh, I just thought that was pretty cool. Guys, everything's done. I got the iConnect hooked up. There you see it. Guys, I uh, I bought the pipe clamps. Those little Velcro straps were pissing me off, and I, I, just, I just couldn't take it no more. I figured I got this much damn money into it. I might as well just go for the damn pipe clamps. But I'm sorry to say... Uh, I didn't get them off of True Tech Tools. I love True Tech Tools. I got my iConnect and everything off of True Tech, but I did not get the pipe clamps off of True Tech because True Tech is, I mean, they're just asking too much money for them. Um, I found them on another website, uh, the Cooper Atkins 4005, and uh, I just couldn't pass up the deal. I mean, uh, they were almost as cheap as these. These are like 60. I got these for like 70 a piece. So, 
uh, you talk about a lot easier to hook up than uh than the dam than these little straps right here so i'm happy with them i'm using this one from outdoor ambi i'm trying to get it out the direct sunlight because it's giving me a false reading the system is in delay uh we're just waiting on the delay waiting on the system to kick in very excited to uh to see this unit perform guys she's running this thing's amazing amazingly quiet i'm really glad i went with the deluxe model i really really am i mean i i'm literally standing right on top of this thing and i'm not raising my voice or anything i mean this is unbelievable how quiet this machine is and the look of it is fantastic and this this is so solid i mean it's unbelievable all right we will let her run it's going to take a while just started we're going to let it stabilize very warm in the house so we're gonna let it run a while and then we'll uh we'll look at it again here in just a minute all right guys I just want to show you where I got my probes at and uh, guys that know more about the eye manifold than me can tell me if I'm making a mistake or not but this is the best way that I have to do it I have one stuck in the return grill here that's the return air probe and then the other one is right here in, in my son's room in the supply register, which is the closest supply run to the air handler. Uh, because the unit is so tall in the closet, I can't reach the plenum to drill a hole and stick it in there. And I'm not going to go crawl all the way across the attic to uh, do that. But I think I've heard Zach say that doing it like this is okay too. So... That's how I've done it. Guys, I've had the machine running for a good 30, 35 minutes now. Things are looking really well. Uh, the target subcooling on the door, the on the unit panel says 11. We're at 8. So it's, it's you know, that's pretty close. And, uh, Super heat's looking good. And if you look right here on our airflow, we're in the green. So that's good. We've got good airflow. Our saturation temperatures are in the green. I mean, you're not going to get everything perfect. Um, it says we're putting out about 5.72 tons, you know, which that's just coming off the airflow probes. I didn't take a CFM measurement or anything and enter it in here, but that's... At least we, and I know that's not probably the correct number, but at least we know that we are putting out at least five tons. We're in the neighborhood. You know, we're putting out five tons of air. We have a 17.8 degree temperature split. Probe one, probe two, probe three, probe four. Active temps. Like I said, superheat's good. The subcooling is continuing to rise. TXV seems to be working very well. Like I said, our saturation temperature is in the green. Our airflow is in the green. Uh, the head pressure, the target head pressure, is 367, and we're well below that. Um, target suction pressure, we're about 10 pounds above that, which you know you're not going to get it perfect. So, but the machine is running great. The house is starting to cool off. I have not installed the uh, EcoBee thermostat yet because. You know, I, that's going to take a little bit. I got to put it on the wall. Then I got to, you know, do my, all my information and stuff. So I just hooked it back up to the Honeywell uh, touchscreen Vision Pro 8000 that I have just so I could get the system up and running, cool the house off. Once I cool the house off, because it started getting warm in there. Once once the house cools off later on, then I will um, install the uh, Ecobee thermostat. So, anyway we'll go we'll get one more look at it very 
There's the yark. There she is, in all her glory. Sweet looking unit, man. These these deluxe models are they're awesome. I mean, they're built like a freaking tank. And it's quiet. Very, very quiet. Line set came out beautiful, my line set cover. Made it all I had to do was make a 45 degree bend right there with that heel more. Very happy with the way it came out. It's performing well. Uh, probably take an amp draw on it here in just a minute, just see what kind of amps it's, it's pulling. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Turning back.